Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Sub Talks. I'm Craig Dale, your host, and together with our special guests, we'll take a deep dive into the topics, challenges and opportunities facing SAP users today. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss another episode. I'm delighted today to be joined by Cliff Saran, Technology Editor, Computer Weekly, and Jaron Main, host of the SAPChat podcast. So, Welcome, gentlemen, live and in person here at UK ISO Connect. Thank you. It's a delight to be here. Yes, well, thank you. It's, uh, yeah, again, likewise, <laughs> nice to be here. Well, it's nice to be in a room. Normally we do all these online, but, you know, so we're here live at Connect 2024, mm. and we're looking to discuss the key subjects covered in the keynotes earlier this morning uh, at the conference. And just before we get into that, I'd just like to ask you, What's your favourite winter sport? Now, while you have a think about that, the first thing that came into my mind was, well, all my children were born in the summer. So, but anyway, that aside, I loved watching Ski Sunday as a child. And many people be thinking, Ski Sunday, what's that all about? But it was when everything used to close on a Sunday. and mm. It used to be such a good, good thing to watch, but now... It's football everywhere, everywhere's open, and nobody <laughs> does things like that anymore. I guess I'm just getting old. I think we're the same age, really, and you think about, I, I remember Ski Sunday, and uh, and yeah, you know, it was it was that thing, when because there was no, nothing else to do, you, you'd end up you'd end up watching it. And, yeah. that, and that iconic theme tune, which still gets me today. Is it do 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 Yeah, something like that, Craig, yeah. <laughs> in, uh, that Morse code. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, so, uh, SOS wasn't it in Morse code? No. Um, uh, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, you're right. Sunday afternoon. It was essential viewing. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, the, the theme tune would come on, and everyone would uh, settle down with a cup of tea, and uh, love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're favorite, in the spot then, Joe. Well, mine, mine. Oh, it's so hard, isn't it? I mean, I'd be the France clamour era of downhill skiing I, I i would yeah i would definitely say downhill skiing toboggan was a close second um but downhill skiing the the bravery the speeds mm, yeah. and um just cutting it to the edge all the time uh always had me and then of course like like any good sport you're just looking for the the the, uh, the wipeouts weren't you and uh and and that, that was the the entertainment value which sounds awful but uh mm. it was essential viewing oh fantastic cliff I mean, again, the, the winter sports. I'd I'd look at the. Um, I mean, in terms of like the Olympics, the the bobsleigh. Uh, it was just oh, because it wow. it was the, mm. it looked like the most scariest thing ever. Absolutely. <laughs> and then cool runnings just comes to mind. Oh as well, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> completely, completely. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh well, thanks very much for that, that guys. And so, just if I, I may start with you, Jaron, if mm. I may. What what do you see as the biggest takeaways from today's keynote sessions? Well, there's so many things to unpack, aren't there? I mean, you, the, the, those couple of hours, the, the, the amount of information that's contained there. I think the one thing I would pick up on is it does feel that SAP in the UK is on a pivot. Uh, and I thought the tone from uh, Leila was quite telling, really. Um, very collaborative, very collegiate. Um, talked about um, the, the journey to S4 being a, a journey you know, uh, and, a, and, a, and a marathon, not a sprint. And I just felt that there was that, that subtle change in tone was was very welcome. Um, lots about AI, which I'm sure we'll unpack a mm. bit later. Um, but for me, I think that would be the, the, the key takeaway. Yeah, thank you. Cliff? Well, I think that um, she also, uh, I think, admitted almost, uh, as a journalist, I thought, she admitted, she admitted, I think, that they overdid it with rise, too much rise, mm. and um, they want to tone that down. I think she used the word, well, you know, we want to showcase all our solutions. And I, I think that includes all the older products as well, because of, you know, because of the companies that spoke afterwards, AstraZeneca, for instance, you look at how complicated mm -hmm. systems these organizations run they can't simply just jump on the rise because sap says they have to jump on the rise it takes a very very long time and i i think there's a bit more of a realization that actually you know some of your most valuable customers aren't going to get there quickly possibly not even by 2027 when the enterprise core components deadline is mm. reaches 
Yeah, I think Connor mentioned that, didn't he? That it's a it's a multi phased process, especially if you're thinking about cloud as well. And that that move is is a number of steps over yeah. a number of years. But I think there was a key theme underneath it, and again from from Russell and the, and the AstraZeneca team, which is you know getting the foundations right, understanding what it is you want to achieve out of that migration to S4 and being very clear from the very beginning. I mean, Russell talked about one of his first key learnings was whenever you start data, however early you start, it's never going to be quick enough. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that that is a key message. So inevitably, I think there will be, you know, a, a, a subset of customers that don't manage to make that 2027 deadline, um, either by, by design or just because they, they, their programs run over or their planning's not quite agile enough. But fundamentally, I think there was that kind of theme about getting the foundations absolutely right from the get-go. Mm -hmm. So just on, on that point, uh, you know, the number of customers that are still in the planning stage uh, moving and the deadline looming in 2027, uh, you said there during that there's going to be some that are going to miss that deadline. And what are your thoughts on that, Cliff? I think that people who run ECC, I mean, I would hope, and the people I've sp spoken to as well, have pretty stable systems and they know how those things work. And I think it's actually very, very hard to move from ECC to th another platform and tell your CFO, well, it does the same thing. <laughs> and on day one, it will do the same thing. It may be the better platform. It's going to be supported. It's going to take you further. And that's a really hard sell. And uh, I think it will take organizations a lot longer. And just looking at AstraZeneca, I I'm so impressed about the, the agile approach uh, to right at the very start to getting the you know the standards right the foundation right and and and, and things can change at the beginning where, where there's a cost later on and even he that they were talk, Russell talked about the fact that they didn't even know what they were buying it, it, it wasn't even the correct thing at the start mm -hmm. so they might have been sold something that they have to then convince people higher up in the organization that actually wasn't quite the right thing this time around and we'd we've learned a bit and now a year on we're going to hopefully you know ask for a little bit more money and you'll accept that and we can mm. we can then move the project forward and was, it was very impressive well, i yeah. think the uh, the the investment is the the key to it because um you know i'm sure astrazeneca had to find that investment and it clearly was huge to make mm. but i think if you look at the the kind of timeline of, of SAP they announced the extension from 25 to 27 I think a month before COVID hit and then we've had the economic uncertainty out of the Ukrainian crisis inflation so many organizations are out there and they're trying to justify it but some of the clients that I've been working with they've pushed their programs out by a year um, purely because you know in terms of investment, there are greater competing demands internally from that organisation. So, you know, sometimes I, uh, I I have to I have to prick myself a little bit to say I have a, a kind of goggles on which are SAP and that's all I see. But these organisations are big organisations working in a you know a multi um, sort of disciplined environment and they have competing demands and those aren't they they're often very tough choices they need to make and mm -hmm. SAP isn't always at the top of the list yeah we talk about that biz business case but like you say when you're looking to the future and what the technology can do it's almost like selling the dream you, you how how do you sell a dream to your cfo as, as you were saying earlier to to get that case to move and i think connor referred to it and as you know being very difficult because of the competing projects just just like you said there jaron and a, another kind of issue that that does keep cropping up is the availability of SAP skills mm. uh, and when I talk to people as well it's often the cost of SAP skills yeah you know when you talk to customers it's you know you look at you're looking for people who are sometimes scarce mm. but as soon as they've got SAP in their skill set their cost also increases so do, do you think uh, is this specific to, to SAP, Cliff, or is it something the whole IT sector's facing? I think that if, I mean, I don't want to bring up the AI word, but now I have. <laughs> I think that if you were looking for 
any skills today, you know, you could date data scientists, data analysts, SAP skills, or other companies. It's going to be difficult to find those people because everyone wants to do wants to innovate. Every business wants to say, well, what can we do with the technology that we have, and how do we move into the AI era, or at least make better use of our data? And that's going to cost. So there, there, there is going to be demand for people who have the skills and enterprise application skills, in this case SAP skills, to be able to do that. So yes, there, there is a, there's going to be a big demand for, for those sorts of people. Yeah, I think um, look, we've been here before. You know, I, I, I came into the industry, into the SAP industry in the mid '90s when there was that whole year 2000. You know, if you even had SAP in passing, if you passed the door, you know, you could command a, a bigger salary. And I think the, the, the issue is, so, so I think the salaries will inevitably, and the, the day rates will in, inevitably increase. That will attract a lot of people. The, the question is, though, how, how educated, how experienced are those people? So you'd be spending a lot of money on somebody that's relatively inexperienced. The second point, I think, though, is important, um, is the use of technology in those um, in those implementations because um, there are technologies available now. Clearly, I, I work in one of those organisations that provide that, that actually take repetitive tasks and they automate them. And I think SAP should be looking at that and I think organisations should be looking at that to reduce the reliance where they can. Often, systems integrators will be the first to go and sell to their clients you know, IoT, AI, and automation and digitalization. And yet, many of their proposals will include manual labor in offshore delivery centers. Mm. So, actually, maybe uh, taking some of their own advice and using automation is, is something we should be looking at as well. Yeah. I mean, I also think there's We've moved on from the 90s. Uh, you know, the, the reason R3 became what it was was because of the Y2K problem and people wanted a solution. Mm. But these days there's lots of alternative cloud platforms, of one of which will be SAP. No doubt you will run SAP if you're an SAP customer. But you do have a choice of which other platforms you use, which CRM, which HR mm. system. And you know, these things do have to talk to each other. Otherwise, you know, people like SAP won't be in business if, if, if their data does, isn't able to communicate. It might communicate better within the one platform. But I think businesses are more in tune now with best of breed than they were because there's a lot more choice. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I am going to mention them, but you know, Salesforce is you know, the biggest CRM company, right? It's, it's right out there. So why wouldn't it be on your shortlist? Mm -hmm. Now, unless you're getting the best deal ever from SAP, I mean, surely you'd be considering all the other options out there. Yeah, and I think, you know, SAP customers will, will have a huge estate of, of solutions of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what works for them and, and their business. We know our community, but we don't know yours yet. Why not share the benefits of your UKI sub membership with those who don't know about us? The UKI sub referral scheme rewards you for helping to grow and develop our community. You can check out the link in the description to find out more about how you can get involved. Terms and conditions apply. We hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast. And you know, just just on that and on the skills piece, do you feel there's anything that you know the SAP sector can do as a whole to attract more? If you like talent into into the industry, I mean, I, d I don't know all the SAP products, but you know the the idea of doing sort of low code and and getting people involved in, I mean, you you look at how much Microsoft has done with um, the Copilot stuff, and I know there's equivalents on all 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 the all of these platforms. I'm saying, well, look how easy it is to, you know automate, do some automation in Excel, right? Now, can we start doing some simple automation that anyone mm. who, who just wants to, you know, I keep pressing these five mouse clicks and typing these three numbers in and then doing a cut and paste between here and here. Surely that can be automated. I know it can be automated. Now, giving people the, the ability to do that and providing them with the skills and saying, yes, you can do that. It's not been locked off by the, you know, the SAP admin. You can do this. I, I think we make a lot of difference because it will help them do their jobs and open up what the platform can do. I do think you're right. I think uh, uh, it was really good to hear Leila promoting 
internships and apprenticeships today. I thought that was really, really good. You, you were saying about, you know, we're not in the 90s any longer. Uh, I think my wife sometimes thinks my dress sense is still in the 90s, shall we say. But, <laughs> but fundamentally, we, we do need that younger talent coming in and we do need their fresh point of view on it um, and bringing those, that fresh perspective into into the industry so i think you know that should be applauded and uh, and and uh, you know urge the wider community to look at doing that as much as possible to to you know um overcome the skills gap that's inevitably going to be there but also you know to be um the talent in in 30 years that are talking around microphones talking about you know what's coming in 2070 or 2080 mm-hmm. and what what do you what are your thoughts on SAP's current innovation strategy? Uh, anything you'd like to share on that? I think inevitably they're focusing on AI. It's not surprising about that. And and frankly, if they weren't, we'd probably be saying, you know, they're missing a trick. I think the challenge is, and Layla pointed out this morning about 130 use cases. I think those use cases are going to be really, really important. There's a bit of a challenge. So in 2019, when I was working for a systems integrator, we were trying to encourage customers to go to S4, and we were selling the notion of an intelligent enterprise because we realized there needed to be a business case behind moving, and therefore, look what you could do on S4. And you said earlier, Cliff, well, reality is you do the same thing. We were trying to make the delineation, look what you can do. The problem is we've moved on and actually the business case rapidly is going to turn it into you're on a burning platform. You have to do something whether you mm. like it or not. I think SAP are really working very hard to prove and they're going to have to work even harder to prove those business cases have real tangible value that have been adopted that do work in a real world and can be implemented really, really quickly. I think that for me is the, 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 the thing that's critical at the moment. And over to me. Well, <clears throat> I think uh, there is a risk. There's an intellectual property risk. If you are a truly innovative company, and every company is truly innovative in some shape or form, there's going to be some part of your business process that is absolutely unique. And if it's captured in, in any AI system, it might take away your USP. It might take away your, you know, your, your unique selling point. Uh, and, and that's a risk for, for an organisation. Um, I mean, yeah, the classic example would be Deliveroo. You know, oh, who would have thought you could have this delivery model and have mo- motorbikes uh, coming around delivering you takeaways? You know, and who would have thought yeah. of that? Well, it's a business process now, isn't it? It's, <laughs> mm. uh, but imagine, you know, 15 years ago uh, and saying, well, this is going to revolutionise the, the way people get home deliveries uh, of, of takeaways. Thanks. And after you brought it into the conversation earlier and said you weren't going to think about mentioning AI. We, we've talked about AI a fair bit. So obviously, as you said, Jaron, SAP has got a big focus on, mm. on AI. And how do you think things will develop in the future? I think I think that the pace of change is going to be, the challenge is the pace of change is going to be so, so quick. And what what organisations need is return on investment. And that's where we go back to that that question very early on. We talked about the need to move, but the reality is you have to have a business case that's backed up, you know, because it's a tough economic environment. And so I think there will be a reluctance to adopt AI wholesale. There'll be a lot of people wanting to see how it pans out. There'll be a lot of, I think what we will see though is the, the tactical use of set use cases to start with people feeling their feet and then move on. But I am still, to go back to the keynotes this morning, the, the, the message from Russell at AstraZeneca resonates in terms of you've got to get your data clean because if your data's not clean, AI is going to, you know, uh, at, at worst, n- not give you the, the results you need or say at best, at worst, you know, it, it, it could do something catastrophic. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of, I think... T- taking a step back, trying to get some of those foundational pieces in place before we could m- move on. But I suspect that's why Layla was so keen to impress about the 130 use cases. Mm. They'll want to be pushing those out uh, to, to people to prove that they're, 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 they're kind of robust. 
Thank you. I mean, on, on that data piece, I think it was a conversation I was having on, on uh, one of our episodes with Chris Gorton, and he was saying, uh, I think, artificial intelligence without good data is artificial stupidity. So <laughs> That's it's right. Quite, yeah, <laughs> I it's thought completely that right. resonated quite yeah. well there in Cliff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that, you know, forget about artificial intelligence. You know, without data, you can't make proper decisions. Business intelligence doesn't work, right? You're business stupid rather than business intelligent, <laughs> aren't you? You know, uh, so uh, I mean, I think you know, getting data right is probably the big project. It's not, it's not the one that's going to grab the headlines. Mm -hmm. But once you have the data right, then you know, AI is just another step. You know, it's just, it's just a bit more advanced analytics. Oh, then you get this other thing, and then you get this other thing, and and suddenly you're using generative AI. You know. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I agree with you know the conversation so far. It's uh, so important to to get your data foundation. Thank you. And if, if I can just kind of think about the uh, SAP keynote with mm. with uh, Lila Romain and, and Rob Geddes, and is, is there anything in in that keynote? Did you take anything away from that around the future direction of SAP technologies and services? I mean, if we put the AI piece aside for now, but anything else? <laughs> Uh, look, I've, I've already said I thought there was a, a distinct change in tone. Um, I, I detect, and I might be completely wrong, but I detect a change from SAP. You know, back back in the the, the, the mid to late nineties and into the early noughties, we used to see a lot of the SAP AEs being, you know, ex users who had industry experience and. I would argue that there were, but there were less salespeople. There were more consultants, industry consultants as well. I think a lot of that went when SAP tried to be a cloud company um, and wanted to be hip and trendy. I detect a change in that tone. I detect more of a collegiate approach with customers and partners and the user group. And you know, we're in this together. Just a couple of comments about helping. Um, clients find their right partner. I think that was really, really important. That that was a bit of a, a departure slightly because they've always been a little bit kind of we don't make that recommendation. So it's nice to see them getting more involved. So for me, I think I might be reading between the lines a bit, maybe a bit too much, but that's for me something I detected. Thank you. Well, I'm just going to quote uh, Rob Geddes directly, actually, and this is what struck me as really interesting. And it's 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 a bit of a niche, but. It struck me as really interesting, so I'm going to say it again. Anyway, um, he said that 80% of all support tickets uh, can be addressed with our knowledge base, with our knowledge mm. base articles. And, it, well, I know how much SAP support costs, you know. And you think, well, actually, that is that is something. And to say that publicly, to say, look, you know, you can get 80% of everything you need without raising a support ticket. I mean, that, for me, that's phenomenal. That's saying, look... Don't, don't 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 call us. <laughs> don't email us. It's all online. It's all there. It's all available to you. And I know you have to obviously pay for that. But that, that's a really sort of a good takeaway for you know people who are going through implementations, going through little you know technical issues. I mean, he raised a whole load of issues like um, you can understand um, where support is needed, where training is needed by looking at just just doing a log and analyzing the support queries and saying, oh, well, people are obviously just calling up because they don't understand how to use the software you know, rather than it, it being an actual bug or a technical issue. So. Oh, thank you. And you, you mentioned a, a, a statement there from, from Rob that resonated quite well with you. Is there anything else, any other statements from, from the keynotes that really resonated with you, Cliff? Well, one was like a, a bit of a no surprise. I mean, you know, SAP wants to be the AI business artificial intelligence company. No surprises there. <laughs> um, no, not really. But um, I mean, I'll go back to what we were talking about at the beginning. I mean, I think it's, um, you know, m moving to SAP rise is a marathon and not, and not a sprint. And that is something that organizations really need to f focus on. You know, it's a multi, multi-year thing. And part of that will involve you being able to manage your ECC estate, understanding that at some point it's going to be out of support. So what are you going to do and how are you going to get to where you need to get to? I, I, I think it's a big challenge for organizations ahead. And at least, you know, with, with the AstraZeneca um, story that was uh, obviously presented today, it's, it's something that people can take away and appreciate that it's not easy. Yeah. 
I'll have to have a chat with the guys as well, see if I can get them in for a trilogy. Yeah, we, we, that, would be, that would be great. Like the next version. And no. I reached out to the way he said, well, if it goes well, yeah, probably. <laughs> might have to discuss it if we have problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jaron, anything resonate particularly with you? Uh, there, were, there were a few things. I, I, I'd go back. There was a, um, a comment that, that Leda made, and, and, uh, and I wrote down, she said, it's about your individual journey. And I just take from what we've seen over the last couple of years, if you mentioned the fact that rise wasn't mentioned because customers have had a lot of rise, 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 and it's felt a little bit like that's the message and we, we push it out to each customer. And I've had customers, I'm sure the user group have had, you know, individuals that have said, I'm just fed up with just all that's all I hear. For me, that was a kind of acknowledgement that everyone's different. Everyone's on their own journey. It was a journey as well. And I just felt that SAP, that shift in tone was a bit more about we're here to help you, but we recognize that you're all individuals. Thank you. And what are you looking forward to for the rest of the event? Well, it's got to be the Sugfest, isn't it? <laughs> it's got to be the Sugfest. On and the slopes. Yeah, on the slopes to, to start with the, the, the <laughs> ski Sunday, to, to start where we fi- or finish where we started from. Um, yeah, but you, you, you know, you know there's a tip on, on, the, on the Tuesday morning, those that might have overdone it on the slopes because you just look for the, the slightly tilted head, the, the bloodshot eyes, the, the, the hoarse voices. You know it was a good night. And I, I was when I used to introduce the keynote on the Tuesday morning, the team used to always say to me, your voice is always different on a Tuesday <laughs> than it is on a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Cliff, Perfect. what are you looking forward to? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, it'll be my first time visiting and the, the, uh, the after show event. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to, well, actually, I'm looking forward to the comedy. Oh, that that is well. We, we we often have a sign up there that says, "If easily offended, don't 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 come in," <laughs> uh, because that that's one of the benefits I think from the the comedy club perspective. Having it on its own, mm. you know your audience because you know the audience is coming in with yep. with open eyes. Yep. When you do it in a big gala dinner setting, it's yeah, very difficult. You've got to try and balance uh, and, and yeah. ask the comedian sometimes to rein it in. So. Hopefully, uh, you will enjoy it. Hopefully, uh, Sugfest also ticks all the boxes. I'm sure it will. And just before we close, is there anything else you, you'd like to add that perhaps we haven't discussed? I'm quite excited. I think we're at a point. With, it feels it feels a bit like an inflection point for me. Mm-hmm. It feels like we've moved into a, a different phase. Um, I think there will be you know different journeys for different clients. I felt that there's a, you know, probably laboring the point but a, a, a subtle change in tone from SAP um, and it feels a little bit more like this is a community effort uh, to, to, to get a migration over the line this is not about um, you know SAP it's not about the the partner it's about all of that ecosystem coming together thank you I think that <clears throat> we know one thing that I did get from the um, early on in the keynote is well, you know, SAP is a business. It does have to make money and it can't support products indefinitely. And understanding that and appreciating that alongside your business strategy is um, you know, something that where you can work alongside SAP and both achieve your objectives. Mm. That's something I took away, which seems quite refreshing. Oh, thank you. Cliff, Jaron. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you spending some time with us here. Uh, And thank you for your time, your insights. And to our listeners, thank you for listening. Uh, We hope you enjoyed the conversation and found it valuable. Please do subscribe so you don't miss any of our future episodes. And until the next time, stay safe, stay well, and stay connected.